Is Social Security going broke? What is the true cause for the Social Security shortage? Did the government take money from the Social Security Trust Fund for other purposes? Is it true that illegal immigrants are collecting Social Security benefits? Answers to these questions and more in this video. Welcome to another episode of the Financial Fast Lane. My name is Lane Martinson. I am the author of the Holistic Retirement Planning Revolution. And the purpose of this channel is to provide educational information um, on retirement planning topics and uh, other financial topics, specifically for people age 50 and older. There are a lot of misunderstandings surrounding Social Security, and it's very easy to understand because Social Security really is very complex. There's over you know, 2,700 rules, and uh, there's also a program operating manual which has in excess of 100,000 rules that are used to define the 2,700 plus rules. And so Social Security is very complex. It has changed over the years. And so hope you'll stick with this, this video. We're gonna cover some really great information that I think will, uh, you will really appreciate. The first question is, did the government raid the cookie jar? Now this is something that is believed by a lot of people. I hear about it in, when I'm teaching retirement planning classes. That's usually one of the questions is they'll say, didn't the government borrow funds out of the Social Security Trust Fund that never got repaid? Didn't this administration take money out or that one and do something? It's, it's, a, it's always a common question. There's a lot of people that believe that. Um, on, my social, on my social security videos that I've created on my YouTube channel, um, there's hundreds of comments and uh, many of them ask that same question or demonstrate that belief. So is that true? There are three trust funds. Old Age and Survivors Trust Fund, that's retirement benefit trust fund. And we have the Disability Trust Fund and Medicare Trust Fund. So there are three separate trust funds. To take money out of a trust fund requires an act of Congress. It is not something that can happen uh, in any other way. So if we go back into history here a little bit, during the 1970s, our economy experienced stagflation. It had a very negative effect on the economy um, that led to some really high inflation in the 80s. But what it caused was short-term cash flow problems for Social Security in the early 80s. Social Security was having a difficult time meeting the Social Security payment obligations at that time. And so what they did, in 1981, Congress passed legislation that would permit interfund borrowing. So it is true that some funds have been borrowed from Social Security trust funds, but um, it's important to understand how that works. The interfund borrowing among the trust funds is only amongst the trust funds, is what was allowed or authorized. So. Prior to that 1981 legislation, there could be no borrowing of any kind. After that legislation, it gave them temporary authority to help manage cash flow. And so in reality, what happened was Social Security, the retirement benefits, Old Age and Survivors Trust Fund, was the one that was having the most cash flow uh, problem. And so they actually borrowed from the Social Security Disability Trust Fund and the Medicare Trust Fund to help meet Social Security payments. Now, the law required that any loans from one trust fund had to be repaid with interest. And they gave a, a deadline of, it had to all be repaid in full with interest by 1989. And by April of 1986, all of the funds were repaid with interest. So, ahead of schedule. Social Security trust funds have never been used for other government spending, despite of popular opinion, or what maybe a media outlet has suggested, or maybe some, some politicians have said. It's just not true. The trust funds are separate accounts, and they always have been. So, in answer to question one, did the government raid the cookie jar? The answer is no. Not to say that there aren't some problems, 
um, and I'm going to get there. We're going to talk about what the problems are. But let's go to, to question two. Are illegal immigrants collecting Social Security benefits? This is another common theme that we hear. And uh, is it true? It is true that U.S. citizenship is not required to receive Social Security retirement benefits. However, the immigrants cannot be illegal. They must be lawfully in, this, in the country and they must pay into the system with the same requirements as anyone else. So you have to have a minimum of 40 credits or 10 years of work history before you would ever be able to claim Social Security retirement benefits. And so um, now what may cause some confusion here is there are some welfare programs that are going towards illegal immigrants. Um, so it's not to say that there's not some benefits that they're receiving, but, but they're not qualifying for Social Security retirement benefits. That's just not the case. And here's a quote from the Congressional Research Service. If an individual never obtains work authorization, none of his or her Social Security covered earnings count towards qualifying for benefits. So even if they're contributing into Social Security system, um, if they don't get that legal status, it, it, those earnings do not count towards benefits. So answer to number two, are illegal immigrants receiving benefits? No. So why then is there a problem? And what exactly is the problem? Let's do a little bit of history here. In what year was Social Security first established? 1935, right? Franklin D. Roosevelt. The original name of Social Security is Federal Old Age Survivors and Disability Insurance Program. So we call it Social Security, but that's really kind of a, a, a nickname. This is the actual name of the program. So in 1935, how many workers were contributing into Social Security for every person that was taking money out? Well, it was a 42 to one ratio. 42 workers, only one person taking money out as far as retirement benefits. How old did you have to be back then, 1935, in order to draw on Social Security benefits? And it was age 65. So today, we can do it earlier than that, right, 62, but you had to be at least 65 before you could ever claim benefits when it was originally put into place. And what was the average life expectancy back then? It's only 62. And so we are living much longer now uh, than we did back then. And so when Social Security um, was designed and put into place originally, it was intended that most Americans would never ever claim. They would never live long enough. Um, because if you made it to age 65, um, how long would you actually be receiving benefits if you claimed benefits? The average was only two years, and then people would die. And so we really live longer, and that's really um, what's made a big difference, as I'll show you here. So today, how many workers um, contribute for every person that's taking money out? The ratio is only three to one. And what will that ratio look like in 10 years? Two to one. What's the earliest age you can draw on Social Security today? 62. And if you begin drawing at 62, how long will you receive benefits on average before you die? 23 years. That's on average. And so that means 50% of the people are going to live beyond the average age. Easily, we're going to have a lot of people, you know, collecting Social Security for more than 30 years. That's like a quarter of a lifetime. And so the real culprit of our Social Security problem is the demographic changes that we have experienced. We have more retirees and we have fewer workers that are paying into Social Security. And that is, that is the truth. We have an aging population and a shrinking workforce. We have 75 million baby boomers that started to retire in 2011. We are averaging today about 10,000 people that are retiring and leaving the workforce. That's an average of 3.6 million per year and it is going to continue at that rate for the next 12 years. So how old are baby boomers today? 
The baby boomer generation spans 18 years from, it started in 1949 and it ended in 1964. So that means that the oldest baby boomers today are only 74 years old and the youngest baby boomers are 56. And that's very really easy for me to remember because I was born in 1964. So I represent the tail end of the baby boomers. My wife, who's a couple years younger, cannot claim uh, the baby boomer status <laughs> like I can. So if we go to the Social Security website, we can find the 2020 annual reports to the public. This is from the Social Security and Medicare Board of Trustees message to the public. They say that Social Security and Medicare both face long-term financing shortfalls under the currently scheduled benefits and financing. So that's the problem we're talking about. Both programs will experience cost growth substantially in excess of GDP growth during through the mid 2030s due to rapid population aging. The old age and survivors insurance trust fund, which pays retirement and survivor benefits, will be able to pay scheduled benefits on a timely basis until 2034. So that is when it is projected that we have a shortage. At that time, the fund's reserves will become depleted. So right now, uh, the trust fund has a reserve of about $2.9 trillion. And for the first time, <clears throat> we are now, uh, the taxes coming in from the workforce is not enough to make the social security payments. And so they are dipping into the reserves and those reserves will last um, until about 2034. So it says, at that time, the fund's reserves will become depleted and continuing tax income will be sufficient to pay 76% of scheduled benefits. So what that means is that our trust fund reserve, which currently has about $2.9 trillion, is now being used to help make the Social Security payments. Prior to this year, the, the tax revenue was sufficient to, to pay out um, all of the benefits. We have now crossed the threshold, you know, we've crossed the point where the tax revenue coming in is not enough, and so now they're dipping into the reserves. Those reserves will last um, until 2034 is the projection. If there were no reforms, and I believe there will be reforms, but if it w everything was to stay the way it is, then Social Security benefits would, by default, be reduced by about 25% across the board. Now, I don't believe that's going to happen. There's thir we have 13 years to get this worked out. I actually have created another video that specifically talks about what are the likely reforms, how do we potentially fix the shortage. So I'll put a link in the description below. You can check that out. But I, I don't want you to be worried about Social Security not being there. Um, that is another very common thing that we hear is when it comes to what Social Security strategy should we use when claiming our strategies, a lot of times people feel like, well, you better just claim as early as you can, get what you can before it runs out. Um, I would suggest that is a, not a good idea, and it is, it is not something that um, you should worry about. Now, are there things to worry about in our government and spending and in our world? Absolutely. But um, I don't believe you should claim your Social Security benefits based upon fear. It's not a good strategy. Um, I have another video as well that we, where we specifically talk about what is the best strategy and, and to go, you know, how should you go about claiming your Social Security benefits to get the maximum benefit for you and for your, over your uh, retirement. I will also have a link below where you can access that video if you're interested in that as well. But there is no political party that is interested in doing away with Social Security. Regardless of what you may hear, uh, Republicans, Democrats, neither one of them has any interest in getting rid of Social Security. They all have interest in fixing it, 
Now, there may be dis there's disagreements on how to best fix it, for sure. Um, but if, you have social, if you're getting Social Security now or if you're going to be getting it within you know, the next few years, I don't think you have any concern that Social Security will not be there for you. Um, I really believe that. Now, there are things to be worried about. and I think higher taxes is in inevitable, and that is going to impact people um, in a big way in the future. I have other videos that go into that as well. But I hope you found this, this information enlightening. Um, I would love to hear any comments that you have below. If you found this valuable, please share, like the video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.